All right, check, check, one, two. Beautiful people, what is up and how are you doing? This is your favorite struggling R&B producer, Valentine The Plug. I'm back with another video. I'm back with another sample. I'm back with a dope, cool progression that I am ready to break down for y'all and flip into a dope beat. So y'all just sit tight, relax, and enjoy the ride. All right, all right. So welcome back into FL Studio. As you can see, I've got my piano roll opened and I've got the piano pattern. I'm using the gentleman in contact, of course. Now that we're on the topic of the sounds that I use, I am supplementing this with a piano from Omnisphere. The patch I'm using is in the vinyl lo-fi bank. Uh, it's called Grandma's Piano Memories. Um, I'm also adding to that uh, a model orchestra and choir which I'm kind of using as a pad which I had some processing on and I've got two vocal samples but I'm gonna get to every individual part in a minute I just want to cycle back to the chord progression all right beautiful people so let's go and break down that chord progression as you can see I have written this chord progression in the beautiful key of A sharp minor and I think that's one of the, the keys that I like working in the most because I'm noticing that usually when I make chord progressions I tend to modulate to this key a lot because it really sounds pleasant to me first chord that I'm using in this chord progression is an F sus4 chord and that F sus4 chord goes nicely into the F minor 7 chord and a, a sus suspended chord actually like a sus2 or a sus4 chord they are great substitutes for your regular major and minor chords if you just want to add something different a little bit of tension a little bit of flavor here and there so we're going from F sus4 to an F minor 7 chord essentially we're going to another F minor 7 chord however I doubled the third and I eventually ended up inverting it so it does sound significantly different. Now that F minor 7 chord goes to a chord which you can read as a C7 sus4 chord. Now once again what really defines a suspended chord, what defines a sus4 chord is that you're taking the major third of a dominant chord in this case and you're raising it to become a, four, a fourth. However, if I wanted to make a sus2 chord, I would simply have to take the minor third of a minor 7 chord and lower it so that it becomes a sus2 chord. So that's essentially how you get your sus chords. So once again, I said that this was a C7 sus4 chord, right? However, if I take this A sharp, I essentially get an A7 sus2 chord. So that's a cool thing about sus chords. You can invert them and they end up being, uh, you know, uh, conventional chords anyway. So that's the cool thing about sus chords. So to recap, F um, sus4, F minor 7, inverted F minor 7, and a C7 sus4. That then actually repeats. So I have another F sus4 chord. And this actually goes into our first degree, but inverted an A minor 7 chord but still arpeggiated. That then lands on a regular smegler C minor 7 chord and that then lands on a chord which is technically not in the scale and that is a D minor 7 chord. And I'm going to explain to you why this does, why this still works actually. So let's talk a little bit about borrowed chords. But first I got to tell y'all about the parallel key. So say that I'm working in A sharp minor, right? The parallel key is actually just a major variant of the key that I'm working with. That means that the parallel uh, key of A sharp minor is simply A sharp major, right? Cool. So a borrowed chord is actually a chord that is not available in A sharp minor, but is actually taken from the parallel key, for example. So this chord, this particular chord, this D sharp minor chord 
is actually available in the key of A sharp major. And it actually makes perfect sense because it is the one, two, three, fourth degree of the A sharp major scale. So I essentially took that to complete my chord progression. And that's a cool little trick that you can also apply if you're making R&B chord progressions, borrowed chords, modal mixing, and that kind of stuff. Now, I switch back to A sharp major. Let's touch upon this little chord. Now, as you know, in the in a major scale, the second degree is always a diminished third. It's always just minor thirds stacked upon each other. However, I decided to take this fifth. I decided to raise it to become a major third, uh, third so that I could make this beautiful minor seventh chord. So once I, I think I said it in a previous video, creative liberties and that kind of stuff, you know, just do what you feel is right so you can get a good, nice, tension-filled, smooth R&B chord progression. So without further ado, the only ado I will tolerate here is Sade ado, but without further ado, let me play you the chord progression. And one thing that I kind of forgot to touch upon is that in the second part of the phrase, I actually used um, a D sharp major sixth chord as kind of a passing chord to lead into this chord, which is, I think, a just a regular C, um, F minor seven chord. So yeah, um, passing chords, don't sleep on those. Please don't. All right, so. So here in the playlist, you can see that I've enabled both the piano track, the Omnisphere piano track, and the track that I'm using as a pad. You can immediately see that I took out the uh, arpeggios in the track that I'm using as a pad, but I'm leaving them in the Omnisphere piano track. Now, when we look at my mixer, you can actually see that I've left my Omnisphere piano very dry, and I've done some processing on my pad, um, an EQ, because I really like my pads to be cloudy and that underwater effect course of course make it a little bit wider phases to give it a little bit more movement to play a lot with fate in being in phase out of phase shaper box playing with the volume giving that pumping effect crystallizer to add some custom granular delay on it to give it a nice kind of sweeping tail end that's what i really like about crystallizer the ability to do that and i added cymatics origin at the end of the chain for some down sampling i was kind of debating with myself whether or not i wanted it at the beginning of the chain but i really like how everything just leads into cymatics so i can just down sample the entire pad as for the vocal sample, I actually took out two tracks for the vocal sample with the same effects, just a little bit of difference. Well, not exactly the same effects as I can see here. Um, there's this vocal sample. Let me play it for y'all. There really isn't some kind of harmony melodic content that you can actually get out of that vocal sample but i do like it to contribute to the ambience so that's why i insist on keeping it in my mix i did have my auto tune ready and some equalizer little alto boy just to play with the four man you know make sure that it sounds deeper replica and raum aka reverb uh, aka delay and reverb and shaper box to play uh, with the volume a bit i just took out a basic pattern shape box has those and i turned down the mix to 15 but i'm gonna turn it up just a little bit because i really like that volume pumping effect second vox channel isn't too radically different just the order is different i did do some very 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 heavy compression which needs a lot more lower attack and a lot more lower release because i do want it to act very quickly um, because you know you look at this waveform it's it's close to being a brick and I don't like that because I do need balance in my mix so that's why so I'm play all the entire sample
so I'm listening to the sample and one artist that I immediately think of is Black. I feel that this would be an amazing fit for Black because I feel that this would become a beat that would facilitate both his singing ability but more importantly his rapping ability. So that's why I'm going with a Black kind of vibe for this sample and the beat that it's eventually going to be. I do think that an artist like Tone Stiff would definitely fit upon his beat um, mostly because it's kind of in his zone in terms of cloudiness especially if you listen to his recent album it's it's totally in his zone so i'm thinking black and tone stiff i do feel that you know if you if you really want to look at it broad maybe it's a little far-fetched but i kind of think that drake could also be on this on some more introspective kind of stuff but let's go with black and tone stiff the tempo that i'm working at is 85 bpm and that's a B bpm that's perfect for beats that have a similar groove like this boom so I need kicks I need a snare I need perks and some other details so I think that in terms of drum it's not gonna be too intricate but it never is with my video so who really cares but y'all know what I'm about to do so my drum ensemble for today is this kick this snare and this hi-hat and I'm kind of uh, I'm using the loud drums by loud drums too by orange and sound which is available on splice and made a conscious decision for this kit because I do want to work with some more raw sounds which you would actually mostly hear in hard uh, uh, hip-hop or trap kind of beats because I, I kind of just want to see what I can do with this um, you know this more raw gritty sound I kind of ended up hating everything except for the hi-hats so I switched back to just a regular trap kit and you know this is what it is right now and eventually that snare became a rim shot uh, I probably don't quite know what I want with the drums just yet but I'm just gonna wing it from here on out Alright, so I topped the entire drum thing off with a dope percussion loop, which I sent to a separate mixer channel. I, I, I'm, it's kind of heavy on the processing. So this is what it sounds like. Soloed, my bad. So what I did, I filtered out a lot of frequencies using uh, the EQ added some down sampling through cymatics. I'm going to add a little bit more chorus just because I can. So it can uh, be nicely faded into this choral. Um, some compression, which I should probably move up the chain a little bit uh, and replica for a little bit of delay. So you boys been messing around the sub lab just a little bit to get the right 808 that I wanted because I couldn't find any good 808 that fit this beat in my kit. So I'm using the Gucci Gang 808 as a template and I was just, you know, building off of that, tweaking it, just adjusting it so I could get the 808 that I like. It's a very subby 808. I actually feel that it's more of a sub bass than an actual 808. Um, and this is what it sounds like now i was i use the root note of course i use the fifth degree and i use the fourth degree and I use the second degree so fifth note fourth note basically notes two to five i used in a descending order and i really really like it so this is what the bass sounds like let me just load a pattern here and let's get it beautiful folks i kind of think this is it 
for basic black tone stiff kind of beat, late night vibes, something that is singable but most definitely rappable, which would facilitate black's rapping skills. I think we've done it. I think we've done the job. I think we've done the damn thing. Uh, so with that being said, beautiful people, thank you for tuning in. If you want to, you can scroll back to the beginning of the video and listen to the full beat so you can get a clear vision of what exactly it is that I created here. Um, but if you won't, then I thank you again for tuning into this video. I wish you a pleasant day. Y'all be easy, and I'm going to see y'all in the next video. Peace.